Welcome to the second segment of our Technology Roundtable. My name is Roman Gaida, and I will be moderating the panel. This Technology Roundtable will cover important issues in the business finance space. In the second segment, we will discuss business identity and mitigating fraud. Let me reintroduce our panel. Christian Dolan is CEO of North Tech. Our next panel member is Kyle Mack. Uh, he is the CEO of Middesk. And lastly, Chris Johannesson is the Managing Director of Digital Strategy at Angst Commercial Finance. We are experiencing a boom in entrepreneurial activity. Lots of new businesses are being formed and many existing businesses are poised to expand. Kyle, what are you seeing as a challenge with businesses establishing an accurate identity? Yeah, good question. Very, uh, very top of mind these days. So I, I really see identity in three big pieces. So first of all, knowing what you're looking for. Uh, and then second, identifying all of the information that actually belongs to that entity based on the information you know. And then finally, being able to have process and procedures in place to as efficiently as possible resolve the exceptions that come up. Uh, and really make sure that decisions are being made with, with accurate information without any kind of false positives or, or false negatives. All of those things together sort of uh, make up just some of the challenges in actually being able to build a, an accurate identity for a business, especially a new business uh, or a small business. Great, thank you, Kyle. Chris, lo looking at all these challenges, um, how does this cause added difficulty in extending credit to businesses? Is, is the fraud risk now growing as a result of this? Yeah, it's, a, it's a good question. And, you know, it's, it's very top of mind for us from a, our perspective, that business identity and the subsequent validation of that is absolutely key as a fraud mitigator. I don't think fraud today is any more top of mind or prevalent than it would have been yesterday. It's just a matter of what are the fraudsters doing to try to defraud um, lenders or other businesses and is trying to stay one step ahead of them. And so what are the tools, what are the processes that are out there that allow for us to, to be able to react and adjust accordingly? And it's absolutely critical for us as a lender to always just be staying one step ahead of them, but then to also have tools and industry experts in technology and all these other aspects to be able to keep us current and up to date so that we don't put ourselves in a situation where we're having to deal with a fraud issue. Thank you, Chris. Chris I think what you're saying about uh, like being current and up to date is is pretty key too. You know, it's a it's a complete cat and mouse game, right? I mean, what what the things that the holes that we're plugging today are, are going to, there's going to be new holes tomorrow. And so it's, it's this evolving uh, ecosystem of, of making sure that we stay on top of, uh, of the technology. And, it, and it's not just the, the fraud aspect. There's also businesses are getting started all the time. And so there's knowing who these new, new, new who these new companies are, there's thin credit files and, and how do you go about uh, connecting with all of them? Thank you, Christian. K Kyle, uh, let's touch on what you were explaining earlier. Who actually controls the identity data? I just kind of see identity data in two buckets. I, I would say primary source data. So we always think about that as the government. And then secondary source or, or alternative data. And that could range anything from the website of a company to their social profiles, their Facebook page, LinkedIn page. Um, so those are the two kind of broad buckets. Um, I think things that are important for a business owner to keep in mind is that in many cases, they do control that information. They are the owners of that information. Um, and the ability for, for a lender or for a data company to actually understand who that business is, is actually, in many cases, very reliant on the entrepreneur, on the business owner, uh, making sure to make that information uh, available and keep it up to date. All of these things together kind of roll up to build it's a sense of confidence, really, and um, that that businesses are legitimate and uh, that they uh, that they're here to stay. 
Christian, you work with Kyle and you work with other partners as well. Um, you're streamlining the validation of identity. How automated can this process actually get? Well, I, I, I think that that's the beauty of, of the service that uh, Middesk is providing as an example. And, and there's other providers similar that do different functions. Um, from a lender standpoint, the process is fully automated. Right, you 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 onboard a customer, an app comes in, you pull credit, you do your background check, you can you can check a sec secretary of state, etc. No nobody's lifting a finger necessarily. But that said, um, what what Middesk and their team might be doing is they will be looking at things automatically. And Kyle, correct me if I misspeak here, but if they're not able to find it, they do have actually humans going in and, and identifying companies. And what's, what's nice for, for us, uh, North Tech, and then also companies like Ings, is we don't know that. Like, we don't know the difference between whether we're finding the data automatically or, or humans actually going in and actually hunting down this information. It, it's abstracted from us. And, and that's the service that uh, Middesk is providing. Yeah, and, and just, to, just to go a, a little bit deeper on that, I mean, that is this balance between data on one hand and, and sort of people on the other. It's, it's not a perfect world. And a lot of what we focus on is really trying to find that balance. We can also get really, really good at it. We can train our teams. We can invest the resources, the capital, the technology to be able to really make that process uh, efficient. And with ultimately the goal of delivering the best possible quality uh, business identity product that's uh, that's available on the market. Yeah, I'd like to add one thing there. And Kyle, you talked about it a little bit. Um, is is the primary data, which is the data that's always available, right? But it's it's then the the secondary data or the social data, the the non primary. And Christian made the comment before: it's a cat and mouse game. There's always going to be a new hole to plug as we evolve as di people's digital profiles evolve, tools that you're deploying or tools that can be leveraged out there give lenders like Ings even more confidence in the the businesses that they're underwriting are in fact the businesses that we expect them to be without uh, trying to defraud us. Th those are the things of how do you always stay one step ahead of a fraudster is having people who are very close to the close to the pulse of what's going on and how to deploy tools and resources to be able to extract that data, pull it in, and then providing us um, actionable actionable data to be able to, to, to make good business decisions. Kyle, can you share some closing remarks, please? Yeah, I'd be happy to. I, I mean, looking back, you look at the last 15 years, Every month, there's somewhere around 200,000 new business applications that come through. So you figure in a given year, there's somewhere between two and three new, two and three million new businesses starting. Look back at the last year; it's actually really interesting. There's right now two to three times the number of new businesses being formed every single month, four to five hundred thousand new businesses a month. And so we're really seeing this huge wave in new business formations and, and entrepreneurship. And then to even go a step further, if you consider 50% of the annual job creation in the U.S. comes from newly formed businesses and small businesses. So I, I think it's critical that as we start to come out of the, the pandemic, this kind of COVID uh, world, that all these new, newly formed and small businesses are able to get access to the products and services they need to form their businesses, to grow their businesses, and, and ultimately to thrive. And I, I, you know, I don't want to forget about the risk of fraud, especially within the lending use case. But I do think through better data, through better tools, better workflows, you know, we can start to move the discussion away from how to, you know, just keep the bad guys out and really figure out how to let more of the, the good guys in, uh, really become this growth enabler for our clients, uh, the businesses that they work with, and, and then ultimately the, the, eco the economic impact that those businesses are able to, to drive. Well, thank you all for sharing your thoughts on business identity and mitigating fraud. We hope this discussion has been informative and we invite you to view our other two segments of our technology roundtable. Thank you all.